right, so Michael sent me an interesting video on yesterday. It was called the 10YR. The 10YR is where you take the 10 most, the best, 10 best statistical seasons out of every player and you put those together to compare years because we can never compare errors, I guess, is what a lot of people try to say. And this is to, still, I guess they say this is not to get a, a who is the best player, but just to give another perception or another viewpoint on how we can dictate the best player. So uh, the people that were in the video, I think, are people that are generally talked about right here. Like Will, you got Bill Russell's in it, uh, Kobe Bryant, Carl Malone. Uh, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, uh, Oscar. Don't forget about Oscar, Oscar bro. Oscar, the greatest of all time, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, when you uh, when you start looking at those uh, those stats like that, ten year, he uh, he had the highest was the highest point total. He snuck into the top five. I'm sorry, he snuck into the top five with point total and rebounds. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So, uh, what were your thoughts on the video? Because you sent it to me. Well, when I initially, um, when I initially watched the video, I was I was definitely intrigued about how. You know, ten years is a really good sample size of somebody's career because it includes like you know a decent time and longevity, mm -hmm. and it's beyond your peak years. Cause, you know, most of the time we talk about your peak. Your peak is normally like you know that four to five year window. So when you talk about ten, it's like kind of good substance and that that weed out majority of the population when you talk about 10 because you know who got 10 everybody yeah, got everybody got that oh he had a really good year or he got back-to-back -back scoring titles or things like that because when i initially like when i initially clicked on the video I was like, I know who the greatest of all time. And you're going to laugh when I say this. I was like, man, Melo about to sneak in. Because <laughs> I was like, 10 years? Oh, yeah. Stay finna, eat, you know, weed out all this negative stuff. And I was like, Melo. I was like, Melo or Kareem? So. But I think all this stuff is being done now just because, I mean, we know who the two are that we want to compare. You know, everybody's looking at, I think, Michael Jeffrey Jordan and LeBron James, LB, LBJ23, right? That's pretty much who, who the world is got is there, too. I think 90% of, of society would say it's either A or B, right? Would you say that? Yeah, but but it's it's our popularity. It's not all like substance. It's popularity. Well, yeah, I, I agree. And you tell me this all the time. There's no set criteria. And I start in, I've started to end my whenever I have a discussion with people, I've started to end it with that. I say, well, you know, it's all about preference, and there's no set criteria. I try to help people understand, or at least I thought that's what I was doing. What you just said, like you were kind of like it's like popularity, it's off this, that, and the third. And I was trying to explain that, you know, I always say there's a difference between greatness and best. Like, you know, what I mean, like the words that you use, you have to understand what you mean by what you're saying, and the other person who's listening to you has to understand what you mean by best. And it might not be their best, you know what I mean? Like, so I found that even in my discussion, I'm doing the same thing that the rest of the world is doing. Just because I feel like these things matter to me or should matter the most, that does not mean that they matter to the next person. Because you pointed out to me, 
This generation is about the here and now. Mm -hmm. I don't, I do not care longevity, whatever. What am I making now as far as money wise? And do I have a chance of winning with these pieces put together? Yep. Versus old school, I'm battling through, you know, uh, I'm battling through adversity because you see it even in day to day games when we used to show up at the court, Michael. We didn't want to show up with a, we went through a, no, no, we never wanted to show up with a team. It was me and you were a team and we wanted to put together pieces. We never wanted to be those guys that showed up and it's like, oh, this is my team, right? These five, you know what I mean? Like every time you show up, you know these five are on teams. So our preference was we wanted to battle through, we wanted to play through that at that time, I'll say, because I know this. When we talk now, you say, I like to show up and have fun. Like, I, I want the team with shooters and with X, Y, and Z because I just want to hoop. And that transcends in, into these players nowadays. So, like I say, it's just it's mixed emotions and mixed feelings when it comes to what preferences are. Yeah, but I'll also add, like, when we used to go play, we didn't have to play together. We understood it's a possibility we may have to battle on the court at some point. But that's my point. That that just brings back the point of our preference. We liked that. Like, we didn't want to – it showed, especially me, you know, like when we used to play those video games too. I make myself mad getting the Memphis Grizzlies. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be – I wanted to fight through – the, the top or whatever you want to call it to put together teams to be like an underdog type deal and not to say Jordan or Kobe or anybody like that were underdogs but that's it, that's what solidified their greatness the fact that you know for that old school and like I said it just shows through a generation I'm, I'm hitting on I'm not going to say I'm hitting on a lot of subjects but I'm bringing up a lot of characteristics or or traits that support what I'm talking about, but such as your grandmother and my grandmother, it wasn't nothing back then for them to stay on a job for 40 or 50 years versus now with our generation, if our feelings get hurt, we out mm -hmm. <laughs> in two weeks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And with basketball, it showed true with that too because the thing with me, and maybe I've never explained it, what I like, what my criteria is, is the fact Jordan played with one franchise. Is the fact Kobe played with one franchise. Is the fact Dirk Nowitzki played for one franchise. But it's not only that they played for one franchise, it's the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows with that one unit to sustain through to do what they did. And when I was talking to uh, one of our old classmates, you know, uh, that was what my argument was, is the fact that people such as myself, I'm not going to say everybody because I'm finding out, like I said, a lot of people in our generation really don't care about that. They care about the right now. But a lot of people in the older generation than myself, it's like it wasn't – Kobe didn't become a black mama with the Shaq three-peat. He became a black mama for the two afterwards. Jordan Jordan wasn't Jordan from the first three. He was, but he solidified it with the three afterwards. And and that's my – like, Dirk is an all-time great, again, because, you know what I mean, like, he stood the test of time. He didn't win. He could have won one. Like, I feel like, you know, he's uh, somebody that those uh, – just like Jordan did – Stopped a lot of the greats in the 90s, you know, Shaq and Kobe and Tim Duncan and uh, and uh, the Spurs were two teams that stopped a lot of the, uh, I mean, a lot of the greats from winning in the late 90s to through the 2000s, I would say. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, when we look at that, those are a lot of, those 90s and the, and the 2000s, there's a lot of great players. I, I give it that. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's that fact 
factor. It's that it factor that separates. And, you know, I always bring it up. It, it's something special for those. Like, Dirk's one matters more to me than LeBron James's three to me. Because I don't really care for the two. And I, I've made that known. I don't care for the two in Miami. And even then, you know, I just now talking to you about it. The fact that Dirk beat that Miami team to get that, you know what I mean? Like that said a that said a lot. Yeah. And uh, you know, for me, like I said, my preference, that is greatness. That's not a that's not something you can judge as they say, you know, you can get lost in that. That's just the eye test. Um I don't know, Dwayne Wade's first one, it was special because you didn't see it coming. You know what I mean? Like, Shaq was on a decline. So that whole, you could, I'm not even going to call it a clicking up. Like, me and you know in hindsight that was a good assembled team, but it was a good assembled team of role players. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like they put together higher guns, you know what I mean, to win that. That was a good team that was put together, and they happened to win. So it was special. Uh, none of Kevin Durant's are special uh, because, like I said, for me, he he didn't he didn't he didn't battle anything. He didn't have to face anything. I mean, they they said it themselves. They the reason that they acquired him was to just do battle with to counter LeBron. Like that was all it was for. We're not gonna stop LeBron. LeBron is gonna get thirty. Let's get another dude to get 30. That way his 30 don't matter. And then we got two other people to drop 25. Yeah, that's true, man. That's so, true. you know, like I say, it's just, I think I said all that to, to, to bring up, you know, what I always talk to you in private about. That's, to me, greatness. You know what I mean? Like that, that is what makes you great. Not, not just your stats, but the, the full picture of it. And then uh, I don't know. Just I'm I'm a I'm a move on with with, with this for now, and uh, defer the floor to you. But there are other things that I do want to look at as we have this discussion, such as you know like footwork, such as you know finishing at the rim and things like that. The difference in their their game, like if you. And that's why I say people get lost in stats, statistics, because LeBron James statistically, you know, I think they're kind of even, but you could give, it could go either way. You could give LeBron James a slight edge, you know, because he has more rebounds and more assists per game. Jordan has more points and uh, steals, though. Jordan has more points and steals. So, like I said, they're tied two for two. And in blocks, they're, they're dead even at, at uh, one a game or zero zero point eight. So, but when we look at the way that the game is played and the flow of the offense and the person who's able to score within the flow of the offense versus that person who just sits there, dribbles the ball, dribbles the ball, dribbles the ball for 19 and 20 seconds in the shot clock and then just does something. Like, to me, that's, that's, that's a difference in the game. The way, the way Michael Jordan goes up and lays up the ball to show his – his, his hand-eye coordination versus somebody who just goes up with power because they're 6'9 and 250 pounds in a league that's smaller. You know, that's something else. I get tired of people saying that 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 the, the players are bigger and faster now. No, they're not. Maybe faster because they're more lean. They, they start on these <coughs> – excuse me, excuse me. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, they start on these diets and weight plans super early, which is leading to more injuries, by the way. Michael has pointed that out, talk, talked about that time and time again, how they have more mileage. Mm -hmm. But they're not bigger. They were bigger back then. That's why we have the whole small ball thing. The reason LeBron James can, the whole argument of quote-unquote him playing the one through five is only because of small ball. If small ball was not a thing, he wouldn't be, he would still be a three. 